and data cable. Next we're going to be installing the in-wall and in-ceiling speakers. Now we're using Channel Vision's ABUS audio distribution system. The volume controls receive baseband audio and power over Cat5 cable from the distribution panel and output amplified uh, audio to the locally attached speakers. There is a row of LEDs which indicates the volume level and a built-in infrared sensor which sends infrared signals back to the input module in the entertainment center. Right, e uh, convenient remote control from anywhere there's a volume control. Mm -hmm. Well, it looks like Steve has already started installing the in-ceiling speakers here in the dining room, right Steve? That's right, Grayson. I'm going to be using Channel Vision's round retrofit, very easy to install speakers. Okay, one on each corner here, looks yes. good. Yep. Well, I'll give you a hand putting it in. Okay, and I'll go ahead and get the volume control installed. Okay, thank you, Rich. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, you've already got the thing marked. Yep. Very good. Ready to cut. All right. Well, Steve, I know we staple these speaker cables up here real well, but it looks like uh, somebody decided they were going to do us a favor. Yeah, it's a common mistake. Somebody just stubbed that out, forced in the wrong spot. We'll just have to pull it back through and just patch over it. That's the cable. And it looks like they did a little spotter job on the other side. Why they picked that place, we have no clue. Again, it's an easy fix. Yeah, but it's typical for a residential installation. You sure. always run into these screw-ups when you come back on the job. It happens. Okay. What do you need first? Um, I'm going to put on my glasses and I'm going to go ahead and cut some drywall. So All right. I'm hand me my drywall saw. Okay. Like most of the ceiling installations, we ran a two conductor 16 gauge cable to each speaker from the volume control. The black conductor to the negative terminal and the red to the positive terminal. Recessed screws engage the locking tabs and secure the speaker to the sheetrock. And the grill just snaps into place. Now, in the master bedroom, we pre-wired for two in-wall speaker locations on the east wall or west wall, depending on where the uh, customer put their bed. Well, the builders told us that the bed is going to be over on the east wall, so we're going to work over here on the west wall. Okay. Now, why don't we get our location mark from our notes we did at pre-wire. Uh, on the left here, where the middle of the stud bay is 22 inches in. All right. Right there. Okay. We're going to be using these rectangular channel vision in-wall speakers, and they come with a template to help us cut the right uh, to cut the hole to the right size. Okay, I talked to the builder about this. He was okay with 60 inches above the finished floor to okay. the bottom of the speaker. All right, we've got that marked. If this was the stud, I want to come in about a half inch so that the ears have sheet wire to grip. Yep. Right? So I'm going to slide over about a half an inch. Okay. And I want the bottom of the frame to be at my 60 inch above finished floor mark. Okay. Okay, perfect. All right. This hole. All right, go ahead. Okay. Good. There's our wire. Well, we lucked out this time. Okay. During pre wire, we daisy chained a 14 4 cable from the left side to the right. Well, so we have to crimp the red green pair of both cables together here for the right speaker. Okay, white to positive for left channel, and black to negative for right left channel. Good Brown. connection. All right. Okay, I'm gonna get the grill back in. Beautiful. Okay. While Rich mounts the other speaker, I tackle the volume control. Since we pre-wired to both sides, I select the correct 14-4 cable. I prep the Cat5 cable from the panel 
and punch it down to the 110 connector. I then prep the 14-4 speaker cable. Red green for the right speaker. White black for the left. I want to store the other pre-wired speaker cable for easy retrieval in case the homeowner decides to rearrange furniture. Earlier in the dining room, Rich connected separate 14-2 cables for each speaker, making sure to get each speaker wired to the correct side. While Rich continues with the volume controls, I mount an A-Bus source module in the entertainment center. This interfaces the baseband analog inputs to Cat5 cable. I connect it to one of the Cat5 jacks that's wired to the A-Bus termination module in the 28-inch enclosure. You get it okay? Mm-hmm. Well, our last stop is up here on the roof. We need to mount the FM, the uh, broadcast off-air antennas and the satellite dish. The off-air antenna is for DTV only. So we're going to use a good UHF only Yagi Uda antenna. <laughs> Yagi it is. <laughs> okay, let's get started. Rich, why don't you take the uh, FM antenna. I'll take the uh, okay. broadcast off-air. When we get done with those, we'll start on the satellite dish. Okay, sounds good. All right. Earlier, I made sure we could get the needed signal strength on this part of the roof while pointed directly at the broadcast site on top of an 8,000 foot mountain about 25 miles away. And to make sure reflections weren't too bad from the adjacent mountain. We started by mounting two short masts sufficiently separated to prevent interaction, at least three feet. Then mounted the antennas. We're using an omnidirectional FM antenna since FM stations are located all over the place. <laughs> that looks good. Yeah, it's not too bad. Next, we retrieve the six coax cables and ground wire we pre wired. Put an extension nope. on it. Okay, well, we'll have to reach the uh, base of it. Rich prepares a short RG6 cable using weatherproof F connectors that'll go from the FM antenna to the grounding block at the base of the UHF antenna and connects it to the ballon, covering the connectors with weatherproofing boots. Okay. <laughs> he then connects a length of 10 gauge ground wire from the mast to one of the two grounding blocks we secure to the base of the UHF antenna and connects the coax to the block as well. I connect the ground conductor from the house to the other grounding block. Rich attaches and secures another short coax cable from the UHF antenna to the grounding block. With a signal level meter attached to the block, we then align the antenna. The antenna is right on the top of that mountain over there, you see. Yeah, so we've got a line of sight path right to it. All right. 